Okay, that's one talented but annoying raspberry out of the way. Uh, Jane, do you want to introduce? Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for Oracle's Pi Day. We have a full day of sessions, demos and hands-on labs, and we hope you enjoy the day. Today we have Stuart, Ali, Matthew and Jason, who are going to be sharing with you interactive gaming which will be a very interesting session and we hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please reach out on Q&A or on the chat. And we will also share links to our public Slack channel as well. So over to you, Stuart, off you go. Thank you, Jane. And uh, thank you everyone for supporting. Um, I've got the guys here watching out for questions. So feel free to ask them the really hard questions. Uh, there's uh, all sorts of skills there. So let's see how we go. A uh, hat tip to Matt, who is here as well, who uh, he's responsible for most of the work that you see here. So thank you to Matt. So what are we gonna cover? This is a really exciting presentation. So we're gonna cover Unreal Engine pixel streaming and how we use that on the cloud. So we're gonna have a quick look at what some of the use cases are. What is WebRTC? What are the basics of pixel streaming? Uh, how we design this to run it on Kubernetes, and then we'll have a demo. Uh, we'll also show you a look inside the cluster for those that are interested, and a bit of Q&A at the end, of course. So who am I? I'm Stuart Coggins. I'm based here in Sydney, Australia. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. We've had some interesting uh, locations turn up this morning, which is brilliant. Um, so a little bit about me, um, generally I, you can see me playing with the cloud, uh, playing with art if possible, what can we do, uh, I tend to get involved in a lot of dem demos, uh, POCs, that sort of thing, always playing with emerging technology where I can, uh, I am partly responsible for the racing cars, if you've ever seen Oracle play with racing cars, um, and I don't mean Red Bull, but uh, bits and pieces, then, then uh, I've been involved in that. Um, I am one of a team in a thing called the XR Lab, which is augmented reality and virtual reality. And you'll see why that matters in a minute. And uh, uh, some of the projects I'm helping on, things like Sal GP and the Red Bull Racing Esports. So I get to do some pretty cool things, but we are here to look at pixel streaming. So what is pixel streaming? So it's an Unreal Engine um, uh, project. Uh, basically, Epic Games have been around for a very long time when I was playing before probably some people were born, uh, playing things like Unreal Tournament 20 odd years ago. Uh, it was a massively uh, awesome uh, multiplayer sort of game development engine and they, em, Epic made it available to developers through various different models over the time. But what they've specifically done recently is turned it into what they call pixel streaming, which is basically a way of running Unreal Engine in the cloud. And so that allows us to do things like the rendering, the encoding and the streaming in the cloud using cloud resources. So if you can't have access to a massively expensive gaming PC, then what are the options? We're using things like WebRTC, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but all of the hard work is done in the cloud and all the rendered frames and sound are sent back to you. And obviously all the things that game inputs are sent back. So we're using WebRTC, which is a peer-to-peer -peer communication framework, and that's for the lowest possible latency, which again, when we talk about Oracle Cloud and the networking infrastructure, you'll see that lowest possible latency is also a really good fit for us specifically. So, if you can still see my screen, there we go, what happened there? So, um, let's look a little bit deeper as to what's going on here. So, again, when we've got different uh, clients, we've got smartphones, we've got our laptop, we've got really high quality, uh, complex scenes with very high resolution. And so, using things like GPU in the cloud makes a lot of sense, especially if you can keep the cost down. Um, so those performance requirements, you know, if anyone of you have tried to put together a gaming PC with a really expensive GPU card, um, it can be uh, a very expensive process. And if you want to do multiplayer and lots of clients, then it's going to get even more difficult still. The other quite nice thing, and especially with things like virtual reality, 
is not having to buy very expensive kit to render some of these things. So you don't need special devices. You don't need a special machine. Um, and it is multi-platform. So again, it's pretty much browser-based. So you, whatever you need to be able to see these things, you've already got access to already. So again, low latency between the browser and the Unreal Engine. And so one of the things we like to talk about is the data. Uh, Oracle very much sells itself as a data company. So how do we make use of some of the data in these, or in these sort of experiences? And that's exactly the word we're looking for, experiences. So what is the role of data in an experience? Well, it doesn't have to just be gaming. It could be simulation, it could be a digital twin, it could just be complex data visualizations and sort of analytics type thing. So the role of data in this is key. We, we, we hold a lot of the world's data. So why not try and use it in an area like this? So pixel streaming, we'll be able to enrich the experience with the enterprise data that we already have access to. So that immersive experience that we like to talk about, gives us a more contextual insight, more visualization, and again, a data-driven interactive experience. We just did some work recently with a, with a hackathon where we use data to drive content inside the metaverse. So massive amounts of data available to us. So let's see if we can use it. Let's see if we can enhance. Let's use our cloud technologies to do things like integration and we can store and process that data because we already have access. And now we've got a way of visualizing. So again, the other flip side to that is if we have an experience like a game uh, or, or a, a IoT, we wanna be able to take data from that experience and do some measurements and KPIs. Uh, there's a really neat technology called Oracle Mode that offers in, in, in experience sort of advertising and measurement and KPIs. And so you can look at your performance. That's just one example of how we can use data from the experience inside our external systems. So, you know, we, when we do things like simulations, and again, if you ever look at some of the Formula One uh, or even just the motor racing and the way they do what if experiences, and they constantly do these things over again, they're using the power of the cloud to measure, they're using augmented reality, they're using AI, using machine learning, and they're looking to see what hasn't necessarily happened yet, but you can visualize that. So it's this idea of this feedback loop to do something, to measure it, to analyze it, to act, and then test, and you go through that whole loop again. So some of the ideas uh, of use cases, and there are many of these, so we're not just gonna to touch on them all, but things like IoT, IoT is an absolute favorite of mine, we use a lot of sensors, we do a lot of processing, machine learning in the cloud, and then we can actually visualize what is going on. So from a digital twin perspective, just from a learning perspective, and visual gives us a whole new perspective on data. So it isn't just numbers, rows and columns, it is actually a visual representation of what we see. So IoT lends itself perfectly, especially if you're out in remote sites, where access to high-end equipment isn't necessarily available. So the pixel streaming platform, the way it shares uh, the renderings across it is obviously a really good one there. Um, again, there are more of these marketing, um, using things like augmented reality in supermarkets. We, we're starting to see a lot more of this coming out now. We're starting to see a lot more integration with SaaS platforms and applications platforms. The user experience now is becoming key for many, many, many organizations. So again, with the campaign, marketing campaign, we can walk down the supermarket aisle, see what's working, see what isn't in a sort of augmented reality sort of view. E-learning, it's one of the great use cases that we've probably talked about a lot for things like virtual reality. Uh, E-learning has been a massive um, uh, uh, adopter of this sort of technology. So this is perfect. Again, having it cloud-based means I can make changes in the cloud without affecting my end users uh, having to download and do new updates. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Like I say, there are many, many, many use cases here. Uh, we're certainly not restricting it to those few. So what do I need to run pixel streaming? Good question. So Unreal actually offers a, a sample. Um, it's not particularly production ready. 
So we'll go into a little bit more detail about that, but basically what it does, it has all the basic WebRTC components that we'll talk about. Um, the most recent release, uh, uh, the released version as opposed to the um, early adopter version of UE 4.27, brought us support for Linux GPUs. They also, which is very exciting and great for us, released published, published images for containers. So they've containerized this. So what we have here, we have the Unreal Engine, which is obviously the, the, the capability of the back end. We've got our ICE, which is our, uh, our interactive connectivity establishment. That is how do I talk to all of my users, all of my clients. And so there's a couple of different servers, the stunt and turn servers. There's the signal server there that does the peer registration and, uh, and the matchmaker, and obviously web server for the web components that you'll see. We'll go into a little bit more detail about these things afterwards. The stun and turn server is really where some of the magic happens in terms of communicating with, um, with our clients. Uh, the, the, they tend not necessarily to be free, although there is an open source version that you'll see we're using. Um, turn as a server will get used more likely on wireless carrier networks because some networks do block WebRTC. So this is a way just to traverse the network. So high level WebRTC. So let's have a quick look at what WebRTC is. So WebRTC is our real time communication over the web, very lightweight, very low latency, allows us to send the, uh, the, the real time data and the media across the internet. It goes through this four-way handshaking process. So any that are into networking will know about that sort of this sort of thing. But basically, my user uh, registers with the back end, and then the stun and turn server that handles a lot of the communication and makes sure that that stream, peer-to-peer uh, -peer stream, is established. As you can appreciate, networks are quite complex at both ends, and so you can't just if you were all on the same network, this would be a lot simpler to achieve but the stunt and turn servers just allow us to negotiate that, um, that, that sort of complex network, if you like. So, as I mentioned, luckily for us, Unreal published these as containers. So, and I also said that the engine itself doesn't lend, or the sample itself doesn't lend itself to production. And, and why is that? Well, you probably need a few more uh, implementations of some of these services just having one running is probably not going to feed uh, multi-users. So what we end up with is, in this Kubernetes case, three different node pools. We've got our turn node pool, which is the one I talked about for stun and turn. So again, public host networking. We're also running this daemon set. Coturn is the uh, open source uh, server we use for turn and stun. Uh, the GPU node pool, again, this is where Unreal plays with the GPU, so we need lots of access to GPU, depending on the workload, and um, and obviously our, no our node pool there for our web, so our generic web services and any other components that we might need. So again, things like uh, REST layers and um, some of the custom metrics, we've got Prometheus adapters in there, we've got some role-based access control in there, and, uh, and some of our node discovery. Uh, pieces. So again, quite a complex network of, um, of requirements. So why don't we go and take a look? So this is where things will get nice and interesting as I swap screens. So bear with me one second. So hopefully you can still see my screen. Can someone confirm you can see the Unreal logo? I'll take it as a yes until someone tells me otherwise. Yeah. I can see it, Stuart. Yeah, excellent, thank you. So um, I'm now connected over the WebRTC to the Kubernetes cluster that we got set up. And if I move my mouse around, you can see that I can interact with this. So this is the standard demo um, that the, the Unreal give to us. So it's pretty cool. I can I can't do too much, but I can change the character that we've got there. Uh, if you fancy this good looking bloke here, then we can get him and we can change his skin. So again, all of this work is being done in the back end on our Kubernetes cluster. If I wanna change 
to the ruins. I already am in, oh no, I'm not, there you go. So that's a bit bright and I can change time of day. That's a bit bright, that one. There we go. So again, so all of that interactivity, I mean, obviously if this was a game, we'd be able to do something a little bit more interesting, but you can see here that I can play and, uh, and have quite a lot of interest. And it's actually, the response time is not too bad. It's probably pretty good for a game. So given that that's all done over the web and I don't have a very powerful PC, then that's all pretty good. So let's just have a quick look at some of the, so this, this, this is just a standard demo here. So we can have a quick look and see some of the amount of uh, bits and pieces that if people are interested in, in some of these uh, statistics, obviously the back end will go and show those in a second, but these are what's going on. This is just part of the demo that Unreal lets us play with. So if we go to uh, Grafana, so we've got Grafana set up here where we're connected to, um, to the, the Prometheus. Um, so we've got a few dashboards floating around here so we can see how many players. I think there's a bit of action going on, maybe some other people inside the demo at the same time. So we've got a lot of the metrics here that we can start to see. So if we wanna just dig into our backend, Kubernetes, we can see lots of these. We can see the different clusters that we've got and the CPU utilizations, again, just by the nodes, that sort of thing. So this is pretty, it's pretty, anyone that's played with these things already will understand all of these. So we can start to measure what's going on here and understand how much we need to be able to service all of our clients. Plenty of graphs here. Okay, so our uptime, so again, availability is pretty cool. So that's good to have. <clears throat> so the footprint for this, just so those that are interested, we've got a we've got one VM running a GPU. We've got um, a, a VM standard E3 flex running our turn worker node. We've got another E3 Flex running our general node pool. We've got six deployments across those um, services. And we've got an ingress controller, which is just a single ingress to traffic router. So those deployments, actually, if we look at the lens in here, we can see an overview. There's my three nodes that we talked about earlier. And so, if I go in here, I can see those different services that we've just talked about that we've got access. So again, there's lots of access to the backend data here, just to make sure that we are doing what we need to do and everything is served with the performance that we need. So I think some of these, And this should be the term. So this is the term one that we talked about. Again, <clears throat> I can see a bit more detail here. Good. Okay. So just so you got access to that, the pixel streaming demo is available there on the Unreal Engine. So. Uh, it's quite uh, interesting, it was Windows support only, but it's sort of got a bit better now with the Linux support. Um, so there we have it, that is the demo. And so I'll go back over here. Seems to have lost my screen, don't I? Just bear with me a sec. Uh, Zoom issues.
So there's some um, additional resources here. So the um, obviously the Unreal Engine pixel streaming and the hosting guide. The hosting guide goes into quite some detail about the networking requirements, which again, we, we've sort of configured in that back end that you saw there. The real-time communication. So these slides will be published. Um, the Coturn open source server that we talked about is right there. And um, the containers for Unreal, um, Again, you can get hold of those here. So that's um, that's really neat way to, to get involved and start getting up and running with this. So I am struggling to get my sharing working. So just bear with me, sorry. There we go. And that's, that's the demo done. So were there any questions and answers? Questions? questions and answers. I'm sure some of them have been answered already. Struggling with my sharing. Okay, do we get any Q and questions? So Dagan, the, the, the question for Unity, this is really around product support from um, from Unreal, so it's an Unreal um, project that we are uh, that we're sort of pu pushing onto Kubernetes. So we're using our Kubernetes engine to run the container version of Unreal. So that depends on what Unity want to do. Um, I don't know if Pixel Streaming, uh, if if I don't believe Unity have anything similar to that. They may have something in the works, I suppose, uh, but but I don't think so. Um, there was a question there about GitHub. Just let me. What was the question about GitHub? Stuart, the question is, is there a GitHub link for a demo? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, Matthew. Um, okay, so Matthew's just answered that there. There's a GitHub link coming. Um, but yes, it, it is on OKE at the moment, uh, David. So yes, um, Matthew's working on, on a, a, a demo for us to be able to publish. Um, so yes, that's coming. Um, any other questions that I missed? No. It's, um, it's a shame the game isn't a bit more, I can do more with the game, but... Uh, it's 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 pretty cool, but it's pretty limited. So let's see. It's just a demo after all. I'll just go back to this, see if I can share that. There we go, that's better. Okay. Stuart, if I, if I might, um, yeah. just to comment on the U Unity thing. Yeah, yeah please. Um, so so we'll, when we took a look at this, right, we had a, a real use case um, that we wanted to implement this for. And uh, we really wanted to take, you know, kind of verbatim the, the Unreal, you know, starter code and wrap around the Kubernetes constructs. Um, you know, with, with as little modification as possible, you know, really for the Unreal community, uh, you know, where they may be already familiar with those services and, you know, operating them and what have you. Um, now with Unity, right, there's a whole, you know, comparable, uh, you know, series of products and solutions and, you know, obviously use cases. Um, they do have a, to my knowledge, they do have a WebRTC plugin, um, and I suspect that much of this solution would, you know, kind of correlate to how you would solve it in that sort of runtime. Uh, there's, there's, you know, again, we have we have the Unreal, uh, you know, services kind of off the shelf um, that we're running here, and, and again with extensions, and we did that again deliberately. So, you know, it would be a bit uh, uh, heterogeneous, if we, if you will, um, if we were to plug in Unity and and run it with the Unreal 
signal server matchmaker and those types of things. You know, ultimately, I think that there's a lot of uh, merit to uh, some some of the work that's going on. Um, you know, in these in this world, right? So using you know GPU and Kubernetes, uh, running these containers, um, and to have more of a universal solution, right? So there's definitely a a um, you know value in that effort. Um, so uh, you know, presently, I think that there's there's merit in trying it with Unity um, and the WebRTC WebRTC plugin they have. Um, I would be a little reluctant to say that that's you know, the best way to go. But um, in any event, yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of it, like the subsystem that is the WebRTC piece, right? Where we have the turn daemon set and um, the scaling there, all the networking set up for that is is really the, the meat and potatoes of how this thing works. Um, you know, beyond that, you know, you're really just kind of doing handshake stuff with the matchmaker and, and signal server. Um, so it's not, um, outrageous to consider the, the prospect of genericizing that. Thank you. Good answer. It'd be good to see more um, applications in this space, especially given the rise of, um, you know, the metaverse and, and other areas where not just virtual reality, but actually browser based experiences. There's a lot of experiences that are now streamed to the browser as well as VR. So it gives, it gives us a broader uh, audience in that respect. So for more technologies to embrace would be, would be good. And obviously WebRTC has been um, a, a really nice uh, way for us to uh, communicate. Okay, just seeing if there's any more questions. Yeah, Dagan, you're absolutely right. That um, you, essentially anything that you can do in Unreal um, that utilizes. So we're actually running the uh, Unreal in the back end, and then obviously that's the, the game is is running in this respect. So uh, you you could technically build a character creators and do more with that sort of thing, and then distribute uh, out over the web. So not everyone needs high power PCs. Okay. Any more questions or are we all done? I, I was going to make one more comment. So I see that um, looks like Terry uh, gave it a go and, and typed in the, <laughs> the nip.io URL uh, for the demo. Yeah. So we, uh, as Stuart described, we're running this with only three VMs total in the back end, you know, really to be a, a, as cost effective as we could be. Um, to run this demo, so it's very low horsepower, um, and we're we're limiting it to two active game active players at a time. Um, if you were to go back to Grafana, there, Stuart. Um, yeah, sure. Just bear with me. And open up the OKE pixel streaming. Yeah, that top one there. Uh, very good. All right. Um, so you can see the GPU is pretty much pegged. Um, and you know, here we're actually we're over committing on the GPU. Um, you know, really for the sake of of demo. Um, you know, normally, you know, with short of the the NVIDIA MIG support um, on the A100 shapes. That are coming, um, you know, you can't you can't request a partial GPU right in a in a deployment in Kubernetes. Um, so what we've we've done is kind of a, a workaround there just to be able to overcommit and run two on a single one. And you know, you're right, your comment it does work fairly good, um, even though the GPU is maxed out. It's just unpredictable. Um, but you can see what it's trying to do here uh, in this top row is there's to two total players. So um, Stuart probably has it open still and then whoever else might be um, having a look. Yep. So, and then two streams total. Now what the, the if you go back to Lens um, now, Stuart. Yep, just bear with me. I'm trying to share as sorry efficiently for, as sorry. I can. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for driving. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's perfect. No, it's good, yeah. it's good. All yeah. right. So now if you go down to the, on the left, yeah, under configuration. 
you'll see HPA. And um, there on the stream autoscaler, you can see it has max pod set to two, um, right? And its its metrics are actually in percentages. So it's a target metric of 90% utilization. Um, so if it's if the streams are 100% utilization, that means you have one stream, one player, and it'll proactively scale up to make room for the next available player. Um, you know, you can obviously tweak that, you know, setting it to one is that it would only ever equate to the exact number of players that existed. And there might be some delay in providing the game and spinning it up, but that could be more cost effective, right? If we're tying, um, you know, a cluster auto scaling to this node pool so that you could scale all those GPU VMs indefinitely um, or not indefinitely, but, you know, um, horizontally quite a bit further than what we're showing here in the demo. Um, but just wanted to call attention to that, how, how these metrics are being applied in the case of um, scaling as well. Yeah, that's, that's good background. Thanks, Matthew. I, I think that's, um, there's some, you know, key points there in terms of how, how much we've built for it as, as opposed to uh, a demo rather than a production environment. But, um, but that's, there's some good pointers. So I'm assuming somebody else has gone in there because I'm still floating around in there too. So will it actually bump other people from going on, Matthew, or will it just, what will it do? Yeah, it gives them like a wait room message. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll just yeah. drop out of that one, just in case, uh, see if anybody managed to get the, the URL. <laughs> Still two, that might just be me as a uh, hanging around. Okay, so cloud-based simulators, yeah. So you, you've actually raised a good point there, Dagan, that um, we're actually working on some projects for cloud-based simulators for organizations. Um, I'm sure that will come out in due course as to who they are and what they are doing. But, um, but at the moment we are, uh, very much capturing a lot of data from simulators that we can then use um, uh, as analytics. But the next stage is to actually run the simulators. So one organization in particular that we're working with is building a physical, uh, I know Matthew's more involved in that than I am, but they're building a physical simulator that uses data from real, uh, real sensors um, to replay. And so, um, that's a really exciting project for us. I think this is where some of this is born. Some of this demo was born. Um, I don't know how much you can say, Matthew, if you can say anything about that project. Uh, not really, but the, the um, you know, just to kind of expand on, on the notion, right? Um, and, and perhaps it's lost in the, um, in the overview here about WebRTC, but um, perhaps one of, one of the most valuable pieces to it is that it also creates a direct data channel to uh, you know to the stream too. So you know whether that's your your you know gamepad interface or your controller interface um, interacting with the game, uh, you have a a you know live data channel that you can just fire hose events and you know controls and you know interactions to that system um, through. So um, that's very nice and, and gives a very smooth. Uh, you know, kind of complete experience as you would expect with, you know, a gaming system or a simulation like that. Yeah, we did do a demo a while ago, I think with NVIDIA, which was running one of the Xbox games in the cloud. And so using a um, WebRTC to get the controller movements over there, which was a few years ago now. So it's quite interesting that we can, you know, this, this technology has taken off the way it has for us to be able to do this using things like cloud GPU, it's, um, it's very cool. Okay. No more questions? Is anyone gonna go run off? If, if people wanna join our Slack channel, um, it'd be really interesting to see what sort of projects people can come up with and, um, and, and how they put this to use. And certainly we'd be really interested in, in helping out or, you know, giving a bit of feedback on what we've done, some of, share some of our experiences. 
but um, but please please do share because it's quite an exciting um, environment. It's it's not necessarily um, you know it's not probably not got the biggest audience in the world right now, but I think it's about to. I think any time now the, the way that um, certain organisations when they start releasing their um, products in this space that we'll see a lot more movement here. So I'd really like to see what other people come up with. <laughs>